So if I was to want to run my stove as frugally as possible, what would what would your advice be? Where would I start? Please like and subscribe. I, th I think um, some people buying stoves as backup and a focal point in a sort of modern setup with gas central heating. I'm not going to sort of focus on that because I think that's less about sort of saving money and more about, you know, focal point for the evening. So serious users, um, you want to start by buying lots of wet wood. So whatever space you've got to store wood, we want to your first year you want to fill it with wet wood. Your first year is going to be your most expensive because you're going to buy a pile of wet wood and then you're going to run your stove on some dry fuel that you buy uh, and buy more regularly to keep you going. That wet wood will dry uh, and of course then you turn it round every year or every two years depending on what you're trying to dry. Uh, and if you can do that um, then you'll have a huge effect on how cheap uh, it is to run your stove. Uh, obviously, if you've got your own wood, um, then it's going to be free anyway. How do you um, dry, dry your wood? Uh, so you chop it up into short lengths, you know, big enough or small enough for your stove, split it down and stack it up, and you've got to make sure that it's off the ground and covered. Um, so if you're very lucky and have lots of space, you might have barns and you might sort of put some pallets on the ground to raise it up, stack it all on top and then put a tarp over or it's just in the barn. If you're like me, it will just be outside on top of a pallet. <laughs> uh, so you just stick a pallet on the ground, stack up your logs and then chuck a tarp over the top. Uh, and that will work just as well as being in a barn. Um, uh, but obviously buying wet wood compared to buying kiln dried wood from the Baltic and having it shipped over, not only is that awful for the environment, uh, but buying local fuel and then drying it yourself is fantastic for the environment and fantastically cheap. So it's exactly what I'd suggest. Um, yeah, in terms of uh, any other ways of saving money, um, it depends again how much work you want to go to because people who can there's a lot of ash dieback going on at the moment so there are trees coming down all over Britain and of course if you can just buy a tree that would be very cheap uh, and if you have got a chainsaw and you're willing to chop it up yourself and split it yourself and stack it yourself you're gonna make it even cheaper again however much effort you're able to go into is essentially how much you're going to save but I have lived and breathed that way of running stoves since I was four years old my dad used to buy trees we would chop them up we'd split them we do all of that and uh, so for us stoves are a very serious heat source but also dirt cheap um, for years dirt cheap is it worth burning um, softer wood, like pallet wood? <clears throat> so I would use um, pallet wood for kindling, but it's not great fuel for proper use because you can it can get very, very hot and uh, it just burns really, really fast. Um, soft wood logs, if you, the advantage with those is, let's say you had a soft wood tree and you chopped it down, chopped it up, that will dry in, over the course of about a year Whereas harder woods like ash and beech are going to need at least a couple of years. So it depends on how much space you've got to store all this wood. If you've got enough space to store two years worth, then you can do it with ash and beech and just circulate it on a two yearly period. Um, but if you have got less space, um, then you might do it with um, uh, softwood logs um, or alternatively you're going to um, perhaps buy seasoned wood so not kiln dried and not wet you're going to buy something in between and that's going to be a little bit more money but it's still going to be less than uh, buying what I buy which is those kiln dried nets probably the most expensive way of running a stove but obviously I'm testing things <laughs> so everything's got to be a bit more measured. Is it better to run 
it constantly or heat it up and that's a really good question actually um lighting a stove is when it produces most of the dirt um once you've got it lit it's a bit like running your car on the motorway at 70. Your, your, your fuel economy is really, really good. It's just running very, very evenly. Um, and if you can replicate that with a stove, if you can run it 24 seven, just effectively cruising, um, it's way cleaner, way, way, way cleaner. Uh, and it's also um, uh, gonna you know, be a much more serious heat source an Arga cooker gives about two kilowatts to the room, so a tiny little output. Heats a huge farmhouse or whatever, you know. Um, they can hit, heat great big areas because they're always on. And if you run your stove in the same way, it'll have exactly the same effect as that Arga cooker. That heat just slowly permeates and spills around the building. Uh, and again, it works out cheaper. And the other thing, obviously, we've noticed is by having lots of different stoves is... Yes. Some stoves, they will burn wood much quicker than others. Some like yeah. up to like twice as fast as. Yeah, easily. Um, things have improved slightly with um, higher efficiency stoves, um, but uh, that's it, a lot of that is the reason why I started making my review videos, is because yeah you know something can have an efficiency figure this and it can look good on paper but what does it actually work like and as you may have seen there are big differences in you know i think one of the worst we've had is about uh six hours to a net of logs and um one of the best has been like you know 15 hours or something uh so the stove you choose has a huge effect and obviously if you're burning for a couple of hours in the evening basically irrelevant but if you're using this more seriously, that's where, well, at least in part, where my reviews become all the more important um, because you can see the real world test of what they actually do.